let's see if anyone can hear me. Microphone. Is it working? Let's find out. Bear with me for a minute here. Anyone coming in? I'm just getting set up. All right, looks good, I guess. Hey guys, Thrift Hunter here, back with a live stream, trying it out. I'm going to talk about some jewelry in my live stream today. I just wanted to test this out. I said I would do a live stream at some point, so here we go. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to show you guys some jewelry um, that I got recently just because I have a few things um, laying around that I'll show because uh, they're kind of interesting. And I'll just talk to you guys about some jewelry things. I get a lot of questions about uh, just different uh, jewelry questions, so I'll answer some of those. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the chat. Living the good life. <laughs> good to see you. Um, all right, so I just have like a little ring. Let me see if you guys can see it. This is a ring I picked up recently. It's a dragon's breath stone. So I don't know how many people have ever heard of this stone, but it's a glass uh, stone that has like this blue. There you go. This blue kind of flash in it. And uh, this one I picked up. The person didn't know what the stone was. It's, it's glass. They knew it was glass, but it's kind of a special stone. Um, this is 14 karat gold, which is um, a little bit unusual to find for a dragon's breath stone. It's usually set in sterling. And this is like a huge, uh, huge stone with a nice old setting. Um, I think I paid around $350 for this, uh, which is maybe more than I would like to pay, but um, it's just a really unique piece. Something that's kind of hard to sell, kind of hard to get top dollar for. Um, it has a lot of gold, it's like 17 grams. So it's a it's a heavy piece. You know, something like this I would retail at like twelve hundred dollars, thousand dollars, something like that. But it, it would just honestly it would take probably a year or more to sell something like this. But really unique. I just I had to buy it. Dragon's breath is kind of a special stone that's hard to find. Um, so I bought that. Uh, this one I've posted before about this is my uh Wilo. Wheelow Opal one here. Uh, Maria, you're asking about the Dragon's Breath. So when was it popular? Uh, it was early 1900s, 1900s to probably 1940s, something like that. Um, I can talk about it a little bit. So what this is, is basically cobalt blue glass that they pour a liquid metal into uh, while it's all molten, um, which creates that kind of effect in there. And from what I've heard, it's actually uh, gold that they use into the glass. And that's why, uh, and the mixture is kind of difficult. It's made in Czechoslovakia. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a difficult mixture to produce today, this same kind of effect. Um, this is gold. This is 14 karat here. I'm living the good life. Um, it's marked on the inside and I've tested it. Real heavy ring. Yeah, you usually don't see this in gold. Um, but yeah, there's the Wheelow Opal. Some of you guys have seen that already. Just have a soft spot for opals. Really like that opal effect. Um, also gold. Um, yeah, not a lot of jewelry that I have right now. I do have this piece that I picked up. It's, a, it's an 18 karat gold uh, little clicker pen. And it has some issues where it's not really clicking properly it's missing a spring in the front but that's a pretty cool piece that i picked up really just bought it for the gold pretty much small small size it's it's really small neat pen another one that i just haven't really um, done anything with i called or i emailed a few pen dealers to see if i could get this repaired and pretty much no one wants to touch it because uh, it's uh, a specialty size. It's gold. They don't want to uh, 
damage it. Most people do fountain pens. So yeah, I tried to get someone that would repair this and no one would. So I'm thinking about maybe trying to contact Mont Blanc or another pen dealer and see if they'll uh, work on it. Cause I kind of want to get it fixed before I sell it. But if the price of gold just goes through the roof again, I'll probably just scrap it, honestly, even though I don't want to. But it's, it's what I do right now, pretty much, is scrap mostly everything. Because the prices are so high. Here's a little green tourmaline ring that I bought on eBay. 14 karat as well. And, uh, yeah, they said this weighed like 10 grams, and when I got it, it weighed like six and a half or something so i was a little disappointed um but i got a little bit of money back i just told them you know hey it's not what you told me it was supposed to be which happens i don't know almost 50 percent of the time i wish i could screen share is there a way to screen share on uh on youtube i'm not sure let's figure it out but i'm watching the um the listings right now on eBay. I'm always watching pretty much uh, 24 seven these days. So don't mind me while I do a little bit of work in case anything pops up. I have um, probably maybe 10 packages or so coming in today or this week. Got a lot coming in today, a lot coming in on Saturday, a lot coming in on Monday. So I'll have some more pieces to show you guys. Uh, how did you start learning about jewelry? Uh, I started when I was like 16, 17, and basically started with the Pawn Stars um, and American Pickers and, and Storage Wars and stuff like that kind of started coming on TV. And I was... Um, I was always like a money guy. I was always thinking of, you know, what ways can I make money? So I would go and Google it basically just be like, you know, what are some ways to make money with, uh, you know, no job, no skills, no nothing. Like what are some things to do? And it would come up like uh, do a lemonade stand, do, uh, you know, mow the lawns, uh, collect cans, whatever. And then one of the things says, you know, sell your junk on eBay. So I was like, okay, maybe I can try that went to a garage sale with my parents and uh, bought a few glass vases. This is actually a funny story. I think I've told it before, but um, let me get a drink real quick. I'll tell you. For my first find ever at a garage sale, uh, it was a Blanco glass decanter. It was a crackle glass um, it's like, it was this round base and then a real thin spout and up to the top. It's like a really rare one. It was missing the, um, stopper and it had the original Blanco, uh, handprint, uh, frosted handprint on the bottom. So it was only made between 1961 and 64, something like that. And so I, I saw this cool piece of glass at this garage sale and I was like, all right, cool. How much? And it was two bucks. So I bought it. First thing I put on eBay, I sold it for $40. I was like super stoked. Um, I packed it up really nice. Just everything all the way uh, bubbled. You know, this had this real thin glass neck. And uh, when I got the box, I had the box all ready. Everything was ready to go. And I lifted it up and the glass went through and broke into a bunch of pieces when I was going to ship it out because I had forgotten to tape the bottom of the box when I uh, packed it up. That was the first thing, my first thing on eBay, and I broke it right when I was about to ship it. So that was kind of funny. But, yeah, I just started um, with that and then uh, went to, like, another garage sale, got a couple of silver chains and um, took them to a jeweler, and they are like, oh, yeah, we'll give you 40 bucks or whatever for them, and I paid, like, $2. I was like, okay, that's cool. So I made some money, and I went to garage sales the next weekend, Got some more stuff, made some more money, and then it just kind of kept going from there. Now I don't really go to garage sales that much at all. Don't go to estate sales that much anymore either. I mean, obviously, there's not that many around right now. But, uh, yeah, that's how I got started. Now I do everything online. But, 
So do you ever take your scales to an estate sale to make sure that you get the weight? It's coming. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I take the, uh, the scales with me. Um, usually if it's like a sale that I know has gold or has silver, absolutely. There's too much money on the line. Um, especially when nowadays I'm buying big gold watches, big gold, um, chains that are a uh, thousand, 2000 and up, you know, uh, yeah, absolutely bring in a scale because, um, I've even noticed that from eBay is that people will get the, uh, um, Marillo, Florencio, I don't know what you're saying. I don't speak Spanish, but uh, don't spam the chat, please. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, you can go away. Let's see. How do I do this? Uh, do you ever go to thrift stores? There we go. I deleted them. All right. Do you ever go to thrift stores or antique stores to find things? Yeah. Like for fun, if I'm in the area of a thrift store or something, like if I'm driving by one, I might stop in. Not that often. And I'll tell you why. It depends. I used to go to thrift stores like almost every day I would go. But... um. It's just the odds of finding something good. I have found a few good things at thrift stores, but the odds of finding something good are much lower than garage sales, estate sales, flea markets, online is all better than going to uh, antique stores um, specifically because not to say that you can't get deals. You definitely can. It, it depends on the place, but like the Goodwill, Salvation Army are corporate i mean they send everything to a centralized hub everything gets sorted everything gets scanned uh professional jewelers look everything over and it gets sent to their auction site a majority of the time and it, you can buy stuff on their auction site and make some money but uh yeah I, I don't go to thrift stores or antique stores that much only as like a casual not enough for like serious business um so under 10, found an early 1800s glass jug, made a mistake of running on a hot water to clean it, and shattered instantly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't buy glass um, or pottery very often at all. I've talked about this for years. I mean, uh, for glass, uh, for, for glass, you want art glass, you want it big, you want it signed, you want it colorful. Um, it's really got to be a top notch piece, it's got to be worth. I mean, probably at least $300 and I got to buy it for like 10 bucks before I'm even interested in buying glass because glass is going to cost you $50 to $100 to ship properly. And it's people can if there's one scratch on it, you'll, you can get it returned. So it's it's kind of a pain. Uh, so I don't really mess around with any glass or porcelain anymore unless it's brand new signed in the box and I get it really cheap. Uh, part of the country do you do your hunting i'm in california so i've talked about that before a lot of people ask um kind of how my area affects my hunting and and that sort of thing and and now i'm almost completely online so i would say like where you're at in the country won't matter if you're buying most things online um but being where i'm at it's definitely a good area but because it's a good area it's also um more competitive so there's a lot of dealers out here and i know all of them they're all good buddies with me um it, there's just tons of them there's just probably 100 200 dealers at every estate sale i mean and they're professionals i mean they do it full time so um i would say being where i'm at on the west coast we find a lot more native american jewelry that's definitely a good thing that we find because we're close to arizona and we get a lot of military stuff because we have military bases near us. And, uh, you know, we're kind of being on the West Coast, you're closer to Hawaii and things like that. So you see some some World War II, World War One stuff more often. What we don't see that they see on the East Coast is a lot more of the antique furniture, antique 
you know, Coke signs, vending machines, that sort of thing. We don't really see over here that often. And they're usually really expensive if you do find them over here, because over here they're, you know, chic and whatever. Um, I've got a few more pieces of jewelry, I guess. Uh, here's some like little tiny 14 karat earrings that I got. These looked way bigger in the pictures. They're like little baby earrings. And those are 14 karat white golds, stuff like that. Like the person in the listing said they were 10 grams and they're three grams. So that happens. You just kind of let them know what happens. You know, not nothing crazy. Here's 14 karat gold, just circle necklace that I bought as scrap or less than scrap. It's too scrap, you know, broken tennis bracelet, 14 karat rubies, diamonds, I'll take them apart and take this apart, take all the stones out and scrap it. Like I have a whole bag here of, this is like my stone bag right now. Diamonds and uh, rubies, emeralds, sapphires. Um, there's like an amethyst in there. So I take everything apart and put it into these little bags. Uh, you're still scrapping. Yeah, I'm still scrapping with my gold guy. Um, he's just a friend of mine that's a dealer at the flea market. And he buys, I mean, he buys bags full of gold uh, and melts them down and scraps them. He pays me between 90 and 92% and he will pay more for nice items and he will, will pay more for watches. Uh, I looked at a uh, refinery nearby they discount the price of gold, so they won't go off of a spot gold price. They actually discount it. I don't know. On their website, it says, like, we discount it due to undercarried gold or whatever, and they only pay, like, 90%, 92% of that discounted gold price. So it really hasn't made sense for me to take anything to a refinery. Uh, the most I can get at a refinery is going to be about 95%, 96%. And you have to have a dealer size for that. And you have to um, melt everything down into a bar. Um, you have to mail it in. I mean, it just it doesn't make sense. The guy comes to my uh, over to my house and, and pays me in cash. I mean, it's, it's as convenient as it gets. And... I don't know. I haven't had any reason to really look elsewhere. I mean, I have looked elsewhere and I haven't found better. So, um, yeah, still scrapping to my guy. Um, I was just going to talk about some stones and things like that. Like, I don't know what examples I have of stones, but I guess I was showing my stone bag. Here's an 18 karat ladies watch. I paid too much for. These little ladies' watches don't have a lot of gold in them. There's a little 10 carat ring, sapphires. This is all stuff I buy at like uh, under scrap. I don't pay, uh, I usually pay around 80%, sometimes less, you know, depending. But I was going to talk about um, gemstones like this, multiple gemstones, and uh, it's just kind of a speech that I've wanted to give for a while is about, you know, little stones like this. And I talked about it a lot before um, about things like pearls, um, peridot, amethyst, topaz, whatever. Um, all your semi-precious gemstones, even ruby, emerald, sapphire. Um, they're just not like worth paying extra for i guess like no one pays extra for them and i i've had so many people tell me well the stones can be worth this and that and i just wanted to talk about the couple of the basic things about stones is the cut and the clarity and the quality and the carat weight and and whatever and how much that affects the value of a gemstone uh so if you take about 95 percent of all gemstones, diamonds, emeralds, sapphires, any anything. It's 
worth less than a hundred dollars usually the stone by itself so i i would call those like just your general populace i don't know pretty stones i guess that add a lot to the overall design of a piece which i talk about a lot uh you don't scrap bro unbroken victorian jewelry do you no i don't uh, I don't scrap anything. I don't have to. It's just really the pieces that I have to. Um, Victorian jewelry, I'll usually find like gold filled pieces or something like that. Don't see a lot of like solid gold Victorian stuff that often. That's really nice. But uh, with, with gemstones, uh, like 95% of it's going to be not worth a lot of money. It's not going to make you rich. And same thing with pearls, like I love pearls as an example in specific because I take out pearls. I take out the pearls out of gold pieces like every day. And people always want to say real pearls. I always love the, the, these are real pearls or whatever. And they do the teeth thing. I don't ever do that. Um, so these are like pearls that I just take pliers and rip out of pieces. Uh, and the thing is with pearls is, 99% of the world pearls are cultured. Cultured means that they take an oyster, they inject it with a bead, grows a pearl around it in a farm. Um, so I'll get to the, the, the metals question in a second. Uh, so when someone tells me about a real pearl, a real pearl to me is a freshwater or a, fr a natural saltwater pearl. So a natural saltwater pearl is extremely rare and almost not even farmed or, or gathered today. I mean, they are in very, very small quantities. And I always talk about, um, about uh, how a natural pearl, like a natural pearl strand necklace, Tiffany & Co., you can look it up, Tiffany & Co. natural strand pearl necklace over a hundred thousand dollars, like easily for a 16 inch small pearl things. Those are real pearls. And, and there's pearls that have to be, and people always talk about like, well, there's the luster, there's how round they are. There's this, there's that to me, if there's, if they're cultured, the highest amount I've ever uh, sold a pair or a necklace of cultured pearls probably $300, maybe $400. Even when you get into Tahitian pearls, um, big gold, big silver, whatever, um, Tahitian pearls, I mean, maybe $1,000 at most for a necklace. It's never like anything crazy. Even Mikamoto, people talk about Mikamoto all the time. I bought and sold tons of Mikamoto. I have Mikamoto um, pieces. This is like a Mikamoto stick pin. That I've had for a while and it's got really nice colored pearls, best luster, everything. Can't sell this for, uh, I have it for like 150 bucks or 200 bucks. Can't sell it because it's, the pearls aren't worth anything. Even, even the, the Mikamoto's nice to put a face to the voice. Yeah. I haven't been on camera a long time. Um, I just wanted to try a live stream. I'm not going to be live streaming for too long. I've already been up with 23 minutes. So, uh, I'm not going to be up too long today. I I want to get it set up so where I can screen share and, you know, have the picture of me like up in a little corner and whatever. And I don't know. At some point, maybe I will, but it hasn't really been worth it to me. But this is easier, a lot easier for me than setting up my camera and lights and, and uploading and doing all this stuff. I guess this just kind of goes up live. So, um, okay, the thoughts on the current uh silver price uh, from palm nice to see you tom tom if you guys haven't checked out his channel the english picker you asked me to be on a uh, uh like your podcast or something at one point i'll have to uh, get on that at some point um so the current price of gold and silver is way up right uh silver's i don't know what it's trading at right now it's 27 28 bucks and gold is around 1950 something like that uh, for the offer still open. All right. Um, for me as a, as a gold dealer and a, and a silver dealer, the prices are, are up for me. Um, I don't want to really give you any investment advice about what you should, if you should buy some or, or sell some or whatever, 
I would say for me as a dealer, it's really good because, um, you know, little uh, gold pieces, I mean, little gold earrings and things start becoming valuable. Whereas before they just, I mean, little pendants like this really weren't worth my time. Um, here's like a nice chain, little necklace, little pieces weren't really, weren't really worth it. And now they are worth it because they're, it's so much money, right? One gram of 18 carats is like $45 or something like that. So, I mean, and you're talking this much gold. So that's, that's uh, really good for the business. Same with silver. Silver, I wasn't even, I mean, I'm still like, I don't really like to mess with silver because I need to make like. A decent amount of money I like on a deal I gotta make like at least a hundred dollars or something on a deal for it to be worth my time and so to make a hundred dollars on silver you're looking at over a kilo that you're gonna need to buy probably two kilos and you're gonna have to get that at a really good price and that kind of stuff it it stacks up really I mean it takes up space and it's just silver is really a pain but at at $27, $28, it starts becoming a little bit more interesting for me because smaller rings, bracelets, chains start becoming kind of worth some money. Um, one of the little tips for you guys um, to look out for in case you don't know is with the price of gold being as high as it is, uh, look at gold fill. Gold fill, I think, is something that there is a huge opportunity in if you can find the right supply of it. So there's a there's a website you can look at that will give you the approximate scrap uh, gold fill value, just like um, gold calc. Let me get a drink here. So your your 120th 12 karat gold fill right now is going for almost $1.50 a gram. Um, and that's gold fill gets a little tricky because it depends on how much it's worn down and things like that. But $1.50 a gram for gold fill is like crazy. Uh, I think your actual selling price on eBay right now is probably a dollar to a dollar 20 per gram. But I know guys that are buying gold fill at 30 cents a gram and are doing fairly well with it. Um, so much silver, tell them to melt it, uh, make a bar. Yeah, no, it's not really worth it to, to put it into a bar. What I've done over the years is just uh, sell my scrap and buy uh, bullion and buy coins and things like that. Like, So I would usually do kind of like a trade-off is where I would sell some scrap and then like whatever profit I would get on that, I would go buy some rounds. I mean, that's the way to do it. I mean, there's no way to, no reason to really get a bar. It's better to just buy some silver rounds. You can buy them. I mean, if you have to go on, on, uh, at max or, or Kitco or whatever, and, and just buy a, you know, whatever, 20 roll, uh, coins, like, I don't know, 400 or 500 bucks. That's the way to do it. Uh, silver plated C tea sets are selling for $4 a pound. Uh, yeah, that's, that's probably true. Um, the thing with those though, it's not for the silver, it's actually for the copper. So that's what they're getting out of like, uh, tea sets and, and, uh, silver plate, um, scrap lots like the silverware and stuff like that. Most of the time they want the copper or brass or whatever. Uh, cause co I think coppers or I don't know what copper's running right now, two fifty or $3 a pound. So that's what, that's what they're, uh, getting out of that. They'll get a little bit of the silver plate off of it as well. Do you scrap on eBay or direct refining? I sell to a, a, a gold buyer, a local gold buyer who sells to a refinery. Uh, he deals in much larger volumes than I do currently. So like I've said, he just pays me really well. He's probably one of the biggest gold buyers in my area. Uh, he sells a lot of it. I mean, the guy's just well connected, I guess he knows, a lot of he has a lot of clients that buy jewelry pieces he has a lot of clients that buy scrap he he has um a lot of he sells at the flea market he sells at like i don't know three or four different flea markets a week he goes to estate sales i mean he's like really well connected so he just i don't know he just pays well i asked him how much he pays and uh that's what i sell all my stuff to for the most part i sell 
so a lot of things I'll sell on eBay too. I mean, anything nicer, like uh, I'll, I'll try and sell on eBay. Usually my rule is like, I'll like put it on eBay for a month or something. And if I can't sell it, then I'll sell it to him because I've had, I can't even count how many things I've had on eBay that are $500 in gold. And I have them listed for six fifty on eBay. Well, after fees and insurance and shipping and everything like that, I mean, I'm getting, if I were to sell it at full price, like six fifty, I have it at six fifty dollars or best offer. Even if I sold it at six fifty, dollars I'm only going to get whatever, five seventy, five sixty, dollars And it's going to take me a year to sell it or whatever. And so if I can get four eighty dollars scrap same day, I mean, it just kind of makes sense a lot of the times to take it off of eBay because you're paying 13% plus shipping and insurance. So it's, yeah, that's, that's a little heavy most of the time for anything bigger gold. Um, the stuff for eBay is like earrings are great for eBay. Rings are great for eBay. Like you can get way more than scrap. So that's, I mean, I'd rather, uh, you know, a $200 in gold ring that I can sell for $400 on eBay. That, that makes sense. Uh, thoughts on platinum. Platinum's low right now. I mean, I think platinum should be higher than gold. But uh, yeah, I think I think platinum's kind of on the cheaper side. A lot harder to find platinum. Uh, I, I don't I don't see a lot of platinum. Platinum's very heavy, it's very dense material. So I, I definitely like platinum as far as uh, thinking if the value is going to go up or not. Uh, let's see. I had to pull down a load of listings for scrap value is more than I selling for. Yeah, exactly. Um, Definitely. I, I mean, if I could just scrap it, I'll just scrap it. Honestly, I'd rather scrap it because I can get the money quicker and buy more stuff. Uh, do you sell direct to known buyers to avoid the listing fees? Um, I have people all the time message me if they can like meet up or, you know, I, I had a, um, a Jaeger LeCoulter Atmos clock. If you guys remember that the guy really just wanted to meet up because he didn't want to pay the hundred dollars in shipping and whatever. And I was just like, I just wasn't interested. I'm, I'm, usually happy to pay the listing fees, right? I mean, I calculate that stuff into my business. Um, yeah, I usually don't have a problem selling the listing fees. I don't sell direct. I've tried uh, selling at the flea market a few times and I don't know, I just didn't have much luck. And I've tried the garage sale thing, selling stuff at the garage sale. I mean, I still have stuff in boxes that I just, I'd rather just get rid of, honestly. Uh, eBay, I'm Thrift Hunter for you, the number four, and then YOU, sort by seller. You should be able to find me. I don't have a whole lot listed right now, maybe 50 items for $9,000. Uh, <clears throat> I plan on listing stuff more. It's just uh, I've been turning and burning on the gold scrap stuff right now. Um, I actually need to check the listings right now to see if there's anything coming up. So I kind of just check um, on eBay. I'm looking for like really unique items, really big items that come in cheap, right? I mean, I'm looking for like big brooches, big, big chains, diamonds, uh, big emeralds that just come in cheap for some reason. Uh, hey, people coming in. Cool. We got what? 28 people watching. All right, cool. I was kind of hoping for... I don't know, maybe 75 or something, but uh, we're doing good. Uh, do you still find people buying jewelry as much on eBay and so many people unemployed in the country try to keep buying jewelry? Um, I'm not selling a lot on eBay at all. Um, even when I was listing more, uh, definitely eBay sales have gone like way down. It's not impossible, but like I said, with the price of gold and silver being like so crazy high that, I mean... Uh, for dealers, a lot of times just scrapping is going to be the best option. Um, I'm buying on eBay, so I think I've, I've done a few videos on that. I buy everything I buy is on eBay. I just watch the listings. I'll have, um, depending on how much I want to work that day, I'll have four, five, six tabs open of 10 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat, platinum, coins, silver, um, whatever I'm searching for that day. I'll have all the tabs up. I'll have them all refreshing all the, the new listings. And yeah, I just watch that from eight in the morning till eight at night, something like that all day. 
and I'll maybe get one deal, two deals a day. And uh, you do that seven days a week or whatever, and you'll make some money for sure. Uh, you still find, let's see, uh, you'll uh, schedule live streams. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, I, I kind of like the live stream so far. It's definitely easier. I don't have a lot of time to be working on editing editing and all that stuff right now. But uh, I, you talked about the uh, under uh, undercarried. Good to see you. Um, yeah, undercarried stuff, see tons of it. Um, that's a big thing on eBay. It's kind of one of the reasons why I'm uh, like a little bit more – experienced at being able to buy on ebay i know like a lot of people are like well show me how to do it show me exactly and i, I hope to get to that point where i can show you guys exactly what i'm doing um but i mean right now it's it's kind of difficult but um there's a lot of fakes a lot of undercarried, a lot of underweighted uh i mean er there's every scam in the book on ebay and you have to be really really skilled at identifying things um, especially with gold chains, especially with um, certain pieces, you have to know settings, you have to know markings, you have to know designers, you have to know how gold looks, what kind of color it is. You have to understand on eBay, a big thing I've noticed from buying on there is, is scale. The scale of a piece is very, very difficult to tell from a picture. So someone can zoom way in on a tiny little charm and make it seem really big or zoom way in on, on a ring. And you have to understand how that sizing works. And it also works both ways is where a piece can look really, really small. And then you get it in person and it's really, really big. And, and so I, I like it when I get the surprises. Uh, I, I mean, I've had happens all the time. I get things that people say is 10 grams and I get it in and it's 20 grams and it's, and it's gold. And I just, you know, obviously that's a big score for me. And then other times they say it's 10 grams and two grams. And so you just handle those things as they happen, right? I contact the seller. Hey, this is exactly what it is. I'll send them pictures, whatever they want. This is exactly what I received. It's not what you said it was. Um, do you want to refund me some money or do you want me to send it back? And and that's just the standard on eBay. And I hate to be like, uh, you know, returning things. Like I get people that say like, uh, you know, well, I'm not selling it as scrap. I'm selling it as a piece, right? As, well, you said it was this, and when I got it, it wasn't. So, I mean, that's clear as day in the eBay guidelines. Um, uh, item not as described as if they put this is what it is, and it's not, then, you know, I have the right to return it. So that's just kind of how it goes. Um, maybe $800 just in gold scrap from a $45 thrift jar. Yeah. Yeah, I'm addicted to finding gold. Yeah, I'm definitely addicted to to buying gold. I like the surprises, like I was telling you guys about. It's like uh, that's for me. That's the big thing is when I I buy something. Uh, a lot of times I'll buy stuff with no weight, no no size, no measurements, no nothing. It's just kind of like here's a whatever 18 karat gold ring. This is how much it is, and I just buy it. Wait a week, get it in. And I have no clue what it's going to be. I just kind of know that it looks like, like if they priced it at 50 bucks, I'm okay with taking that risk. Right. So I like it when it, when it comes in and it's like 20 grams and it was 50 bucks and you're like, <laughs> like how, how did you sell that for 50 bucks? Uh, costume jewelry lots. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I've done that quite a bit too. Buying the, the, big boxes of costume stuff that can be a little tricky and a little in labor intensive. Didn't really like it. Um, I don't even buy really the scrap lots, um, uh, costume jewelry lots. I tried, but I just wasn't finding anything that was like good enough to warrant doing it a bunch more, uh, 4,800 for my handmade chain. He's six, six, I paid him 4k. He gave it to me. I still home 800. I tested it 17. Do you think I should pay him less than the 1800? Um, with, with jewelry. So yeah, it, you definitely should work it out. And, uh, you're saying you tested it at 17.2. I mean, you, you need an XRF. I mean, we are talking that kind of money, 4,000, um, jewelry, jewelry is a, how do you explain it? It's like a trust game, right? I mean, you have to, 
there has to be a mutual trust. We're talking, I mean, a diamond, a diamond this big, right, is $200,000, right? I mean, it's this big, $200,000. And I'm going to say, here, do you want to buy this? And you're going to look at it and stuff. And, you know, and if it turns out, hey, this isn't a diamond, yeah, you're going to, you know, I mean, there's just like, Certain things with with jewelry is yeah. If, if it's not right, it needs to be right, a hundred percent. If someone tells you well, this is what it is and it's not, uh, you absolutely have the right to uh, negotiate that back because it's it's just not fair to everyone involved. And that's why I don't do too many deals at estate sales anymore because a lot of the estate sale companies are just jerks and they won't take things back and they sell you stuff that's fake all the time and they're just shady, right? Um, I mean, so I kind of, uh, the way I explain to it, I don't know. I explain it like, um, I don't know how to say this, but like in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, where they do the diamond district, the diamond deals, everything's done on a handshake, right? I mean, there's no, that's how jewelry deals are meant to be done. It's just, you know, this is what I have. This is what I say it is. I tested it. Everything to, is best to my knowledge. We shake hands. We go our separate ways. If anyone comes back to me with any of my things, my my gold guide, whoever buys from me knows this, even on eBay, I've had tons of returns, is I honor my stuff 100%. I mean, if I bought it $200 gold and I tested it and it was good to me and I sell it to you and you get it tested and it comes up as not gold, I'm eating that loss. It just hands down. I mean, it's... Uh, if you don't have that trust, no one's going to want to deal with you. No one's going to come to you with their with their fifteen thousand dollar paddock or their twenty thousand dollar paddock fully wristwatch and sell it to you if you sold them some bunk silver, you know, a week before. So you definitely having a good name in the jewelry business means a lot for sure. Did you show us all your treasure? I have um, I have like more treasures than I know what to do with. Um, I don't know what you want to see. I kind of have everything. There's like a little opal ring. I have, I don't even know, boxes of silver. I think I showed this. I'm not sure if I showed this one. Hopefully you can see that. I bought this off of a off of a dealer at the flea market, and it's uh, kind of an interesting piece. I still have no idea really what it is. I posted uh, pictures of this on eBay. It's like a reliquary, uh, antique pendant. Someone was telling me that this could be from like the 1800s, possibly the 1700s. And they think it's uh, possibly a Chinese goddess or something like that. Um, but we don't really know what it is. But yeah, there's like a cool, that's a silver piece. I don't know. These things can go for a lot of money and I haven't really done anything with it because I'm not sure. I may send pictures of this to like a, an auction house or something. Uh, have I found any vintage men's watches? Oh, tons of them, tons of them. I, but I sell them all right away, right? I mean, I wish I, uh, like I said, I need to figure out the screen share thing on, on YouTube. And I can show you guys some of the things I've sold. But yeah, I've had a uh, gold LeCoultre watch. I had a uh, Rolex last week. I had, uh, I've sold like a couple Bolivas. I had an Accutron. Um, what else have I had? I had a Boucherer. 21 jewel something automatic i've had ladies watches i mean yeah i've sold probably i don't know 30 or 40 watches in the past like month i, mean, I, I sell watches all the time uh it looked like the grim reaper i know my my lighting's kind of weird i have lights like i said the stream is not going to be very professional i'm just kind of setting up talking for a little bit because i i just wanted to try but yeah i mean i still have I mean, I have ton, I have boxes and boxes of stuff. A lot of this stuff I just haven't decided to really want to deal with right now. There's another dragon's breath. There's a cuff bracelet that I got in a in a group. It's kind of a weird lot. It was like a silver spoon, a gold ring, and then this bracelet. And I thought this bracelet was nice, so I bought that. I've got all kinds of stuff. And there's a silver and marcasite bangle. This is just stuff that I've kind of put on the back burner because it makes more sense for me to spend my time uh, buying more and then really um, focusing on some smaller stuff. 
here's a bag of gold filled scrap. It's just scrap stuff that I'm going to get rid of at some point. And I've just been holding on to, you know, all the stuff you guys have seen before. Silver bracelet. Have you ever find any expensive rubies? Yeah, so that kind of goes back to the gemstone uh, conversation. Um, rubies are probably the hardest uh, gemstone to find in general that's worth some money. So 95, 97, 99% of any rubies you're going to find are just going to be your typical ruby that's included that's not very nice. Um, if you find something, maybe a carrot that's a little bit cleaner, uh, yeah, maybe that's $100 or something. But to find a big ruby that's of decent quality is just, I mean, uh, I don't know what a five carat ruby that's uh, has a pretty good color and a pretty good clarity is going to run you $30,000 or something like that. I get uh, something that I talk about a lot is, is how many people say things are ruby or say things are sapphire or say things are when it's like big. And I'm just like, <laughs> if that thing was real, that would be, you know, a ruby this big, that's clear is a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it's, you just don't see the good quality stuff like ever. I mean, you just don't see it. Uh, do you want to keep apart for investment items? Um, uh, I don't get too much into what I'm exactly invested in. I can tell you I have a different opinion of how things are going to go down. Uh, I can tell you I'm betting against the market. Uh, I think the market is very oversaturated, so... I'm not looking to really purchase a whole bunch for inve investment. I think the market's going to go down, but uh, been wrong for years. So don't take that as advice. Uh, so 14 karat diamond ruby pendant for 300 bucks. Yeah. I mean, I talk a lot about how a piece looks means a million times more than the materials uh, that, that make it up. Um, why don't you do a live sale? Eh, I don't know. I could, but I don't really like those kind of live sales because it's, I don't know. I think it's a little misleading and people pay more than they should for junk. So I, I don't know. Uh, sentimental types to, uh, sentimental attachment to any t items. Um, yeah, sure. I, I keep some things, but usually I eventually sell them. There's a couple of things that I've kept. What have I kept? I have a few knives that I've kept. Um, just some nice pocket knives that I like, um, that I use, you know, for opening boxes and whatever. So I've kept a couple of pocket knives, like some spider codes and, and whatever. Um, I've kept some military stuff, a lot of like World War II uh, name bracelets, ID tags, that sort of stuff. I don't really uh, intend on selling military medals and stuff like that. I don't really, I kind of throw that stuff in a safe. Um, not that I'm really attached to it, but I just, I don't feel like uh, selling those things off. And I keep coins. Like I said, I keep, I kind of put away coins as I get them. Uh, and I wait for the price to go up and sell them. I bought most of my coins around like 13 to $16 on silver. So I'm up quite a bit on those and I may sell it, sell off my collection soon and just buy more later when it's cheaper. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, as, but as far as investment, um, I, every time I invest, I lose money. So I tend not to I tend to just flip and save but all my money pretty much goes back into buying more. I buy right now like over $5,000 a week probably. And I'm looking to buy 10,000, 20,000 a week if I can, if I can find it, you know? So I'm kind of keeping that money available in case I need to do some, some bigger deals. Uh, Cause that's where you really are going to make money on, on, on investment. How long did it take you to get good at gem? I'm still getting better at identifying gemstones. Um, one of my ones that I'm working on right now, like a lot, is jade. So jade is probably the most difficult gemstone to identify a good quality stone out of any stone. And I probably know a, a lot about jade, but I talked to, I have a few uh, Asian friends that I've 
asked, you know, just how do I know what good jade is? And they said, well, it's difficult. It's difficult even for us. And they said that, um, uh, you know, I look at things. So the color of jade, there's right. There's two jades, nephrite jade, jadeite jade. Nephrite jade is the spinach green, dark jade. We don't really care about, right. Cause it's, it's not worth that much money. Big statues maybe, but I mean, nephrite jade is nephrite jade, right. Jadeite jade. There's a big range of jadeite jade and there's lots and lots and lots of fakes of jadeite jade, right. So jadeite jade, don't think I have anything jade, but I do have like something like this, I guess. This is a, this is a purple jade, right? Lavender jade, they call it. This is uh, what looks like to me for sure a dyed piece. And why do I know it's dyed? It's all even color. It's all perfectly dark lavender. Um, again, I wish I could show the screen share, but when you're looking at a slab of jade, right? Like the raw rock that jade comes from, there's little veins, right? Of color, right? There's it's mostly white. And then you get this little streak of green or the streak of purple or streak of red or streak of yellow or whatever. Right. So it's, it's the same thing as other gemstones is, is you take a big raw piece and then you're getting down to one little quality thing. Right. So there's, there's these veins of color and there's different variances in that vein of color. And to get a bangle, a bangle bracelet, this big or bigger or smaller or whatever, right. A big jade bangle you need to put on that slab a jade cutout and have color, as much color as possible be in that entire thing. That's good color. So it's, uh, and then you need the transparency, obviously is another factor. Um, th there's a lot of things that go into to identifying jade. I would say the most important is color and not being dyed, being a natural color. And it's it's gotta be, with with jade the real stuff that i've seen in person that's good quality jade i mean it's it is like holy moly the thing is like glowing you ping it, it sounds like a bell i mean it, it, and the carving is really nice usually they have um on good jade diamond setting platinum gold wrapped all around it i mean i, I would say for a beginner at jade if you don't know anything about jade, look at the setting. The setting is going to be very important. Um, it, the better jade is going to have a nice big setting, a nice gold. It's going to be stamped. And it'll be stamped with uh, Chinese characters instead of 18K or whatever, because that's an export piece. You know right away pretty much that if it's stamped 14K, 18K is export, right? The real stuff is stamped with Chinese characters, right, for gold or platinum or whatever it is. Um, so I would always say, look at the setting, the more, uh, advanced the setting, maybe the more you can pay for the stone itself. You want to look for cracks. You want to look for, you know, uh, how good the carving is. Another thing about the carving of Jade is uh, what I've noticed, just whether this is true or not, I don't know. But when you look at the piece of a carving, that's really intricately carved and you can't tell what it is. You're just like, I have no idea. It's something. Those are usually the good pieces. I don't know why, because, but then you look at it really and it's like, oh, well, it's a gourd with vines and it's got bats on it and it's whatever, whatever, right? I mean, but it's usually the ones that you look at and you're just like, I can't tell what it is. They're usually the good ones. Uh, the ones that you can see like, oh, that's a butterfly or whatever, are usually not that good. Um, for the, thanks for the pearl ring. I don't know what pearl ring. Did I send you a pearl, did I sell you a pearl ring? Uh, I thought I found a purple jade bangle and a bonnet. It turned out to be glass. Yeah, uh, jade's really hard to to tell on a bangle. Bangle is probably almost impossible for a normal person to to really tell. Um, very cold, obviously. That's a characteristic of jade. The ping on it is really nice. It's just like gold or silver coins. Like it has that sound. Jade has this very specific sound to it as well. Um, you know, a lot of times the color will be too even. That's usually a dead giveaway. Um, you should see white and green and, and, you know, more variance in color and pattern. And then it shouldn't look like all saturated. Like it was, uh, I don't know, like the, the color shouldn't be all the way through the stone. Usually, um, it's going to be like in different places and it's not, it doesn't look like when you drop, uh, uh, food coloring into water where it kind of like goes everywhere that's kind of how the fake stuff looks uh 
Um, you really want it to look more like a, a natural stone. But so that's just jade. I mean, ruby and emerald, the same thing. I mean, just finding if you you always have to start with the raw stuff, right? Right. I mean, like the stone and you need a stone this big to get a stone this big that is good quality. And a stone this big is going to cost you uh, whatever, $100,000 to buy it, this stone. And then to buy, you know, and you're taking a chance. The person who's buying the stone is gambling that they're going to be able to cut something this big. I mean, it's the, the real stuff is really rare and really expensive for a reason is because it's just to get something of actual good quality is almost impossible. Uh, shifting large amounts of costume jewelry, um, just flat rate boxes, pretty much large flat rate boxes. Uh, I was usually getting 50 to a hundred dollars, uh, per like 20, 20 pounds, something like that. It's like a hundred dollars. Uh, most of the time the costume jewelry, you just want to, if it's all broken and busted and not signed and just kind of junk stuff. Yeah. Just flat rate. Flat rate boxes, put it up for auction for a week and charge the shipping price and get rid of it. I mean, there's no I mean, individual pieces you can sell, but I've had very little luck with costume jewelry lately for sure. There's no expendable uh, money out there. Um, yeah, I think that, that covers quite a bit. I really need to get back to work. Uh, I have more stuff coming in today and tomorrow and Monday and whatever. So, when I get some more stuff in, I wanted to save more than what I have to show you guys. Um, I'll definitely show you guys. I have like an 18 karat pocket watch coming in, a 14 karat pocket watch coming in. I have um, gold bracelets and I don't know, all kinds of stuff coming in. Um, UK, loads of resellable stuff, but it's just long term stuff, really. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of holding on to anything. I, I don't want to have. Even what I have right now is too much. I mean, I'm probably just going to end up taking all of this to my to my gold guy and just saying, hey, give me 500 bucks or whatever for all of it. I mean, I'm trying to really cut down. That's why I do jewelry in general is because I don't want to have too much stuff. Yeah, good to see you, Tom. Um, I, I've got to watch some of your videos, see if you got anything up. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. I want to talk to you guys. Uh, there's yeah, you and... Uh, there's a couple other uh, YouTube channels that have, have contacted me that want to talk about jewelry. There's a bunch of other, you guys know, you guys probably watch them all, all the other picker channels that I'd like to get on to a call with them. Uh, I'll have to watch this back. I don't know how the audio has been for you guys. I have a headset. I'll probably use that next time. And I want to get some kind of a, you know, display set up to where this looks a little bit nicer. But yeah, I think we're coming up on about an hour. So we're going to, we're going to call it here. I got to get back to work. So yeah, guys have a good day.